tough going with the flooding, but yeah. some good news in terms of just how much we're squeezing out of this. Yeah, this, this maybe this what may be close to the last dose from this. right? Well, at least for a while, you're right. We are going to start to dry things out. I do think tomorrow will not be such a bad storm day, though, before we really do start to dry things out. So, Dean, let's talk about what happened today. And you were sitting there on the anchor desk as all of this sort of started to happen. And we were on at 530. And we started to notice a couple of storms developing in the foothills right around the I-40 area as you head through the canyon here. Then, by about 6:15, we saw another complex of storms start to come down from the north. These two combined over the city to form some more storms, and that really led to what was a good setup across the board for heavy rain for about an hour and a half across the valley floor, up into the heights and foothills, and out on the west side as well. Likely our best coverage that we've seen for one individual complex of storms so far this summer. So this was a good setup, but we did see some flooding across areas around Mesa del Sol. We're getting reports of some flooding there. We're getting some reports down in the valley of some flooding. And here's some of the initial numbers that we've gotten in. Some of these are changing a bit, but Taylor Ranch got over an inch from a report there. The Sunport got close to an inch. We'll go through the numbers tonight at 10 on how we're doing on KRQE News 13 for the month so far, and we're looking very good. Ventana Ranch over a half inch in the foothills now, a report of 0.86. Up into the heights, 1.2 inches, and out in Rio Rancho, about 0.36 inches from this. So this was a good setup, and it may not quite be over yet. It's going to be interesting stuff to watch here and I'll explain why in just a moment but across the northeast we continue with flash flood watches for tonight nothing in the metro as far as watches go but we do still have some of those flood warnings to our south over Valencia and Torrance counties right now here's part of the reason we're keeping a very close eye on things there are more storms to our north here and more impulses of moisture and cool air coming down across the east side of the state so there's no doubt we could fire up a few more storms during the overnight hours here and as we look across the state we've got a nice band of storms stretching just south of I-40, and these will continue to try to make progress down to the south. But there's a lot happening out here weather-wise and a lot of different dynamics in place. But as you can tell, in central sections of the state, we do have decent storm coverage. For now, we're getting a break in the metro area. And I know as you look at this, you think, well, okay, we're finished, right? Well, that, not necessarily. And because we have a lot of things going on, we'll explain why there may still be some action to be had here. 66 degrees in the metro right now, south, southeast wind at 12 miles an hour. Across the north, temperatures 50s and 60s, not too bad. Some 70s around Tucum Carry and down to the south, 70s and 80s. Looking at satellite and radar, we got a lot of storm activity up into Colorado, and we are going to push some of that down during the night tonight and into early tomorrow. So just because we're getting a break now doesn't mean we continue to see that break. So let's talk triggers. Now, what do I mean when I say triggers? Triggers are things that take the moisture and bring it up in the atmosphere and convert it to thunderstorms, rain showers, and needed, of course, precept across the state. So we had triggers early on in the day. We had more sunshine early. That helped to heat the earth. That pushed up some of the thunderstorms we saw early on, especially over Rio Reba County. Then as we worked throughout the day, we pushed an impulse of cold air in here, cooler air anyway, and was a focusing point for some severe storms, and we grabbed some of those storms here in the metro area. Well, during the overnight hours, we're likely to see another impulse of cool air, and a couple little weather disturbances are still up to our north that may well kick through during the overnight hours and into tomorrow. We could even see some more storms again tomorrow that could help to keep things pretty active. So that's why we're not ready to write off the night is done here. We do need to keep a very close eye on what's happening to our north because with that many triggers in play, whether it be boundaries coming in or whether it's little weather disturbances, we could stay active here through tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon I think looks pretty active too before that high pressure slides back in and starts to dry us out. 86 in Grants, 91 Farmington and 88 in Gallup, partly cloudy spot storms out there over to the southwest, scattered afternoon thunderstorms, 94 TRC, 86 Silver City and 94 in Lordsburg, over to the southeast, partly sunny afternoon thunderstorms. Look like a decent bet, and then look at the heat come back 100 degrees on Sunday. Meanwhile, up to the northeast, widespread storms. Some of them will be tonight, some of them will be tomorrow. Meanwhile, northern mountains, you guys may not be done yet. Scattered thunderstorms will remain possible tonight, and then numerous storms possible again for tomorrow. East mountains, you guys haven't seen a tremendous amount yet. You're still going to get a chance at some more storms later on tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. 92 in the heights tomorrow, 94 in Rio Rancho. Watch for the possibility of scattered storms overnight, and we could be right on the edge of it again for tomorrow. Extended forecast, fewer storms by Friday. Friday's the day I think you'll really notice a difference. And then Saturday and Sunday temps go up Monday, Tuesday, 98.
for a high. We are tweeting like we're getting paid for it <laughs> at KRQE Mark. If only. Yeah. Thanks, Mark.